Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, October 30th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Alright, uh, just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to be moving fast in these, uh, in these reports today. I'm not going to have time to summarize, and I advise you to check out the links. Um, I remember somebody posting uh, a comment once before, not too long ago, saying or describing GGN as machine gun news. And it's uh, pretty close. Uh, sometimes I do slow it down. I do have times to elaborate uh, to elaborate on subjects and points I'm trying to make. But uh, sometimes I just I have a lot of news that I got to get to, and I don't have time to talk. So I'm just uh, basically responding to uh, to some comments about that. You know, especially towards the end of these news reports, that's where I literally empty the clip with what I have. I mean, I have hundreds of articles that I haven't got to in months, and you'll see some of them in in today's reports so okay so is sandy the face of climate change that's what we're all hearing right now uh, some politicians think it's a wake-up call scientists aren't ready to say so the devastation wrought by hurricane sandy's has people asking did climate change do this so they said we have a hundred year flood every two years now and that's because all the weather modification and cloud seeding so are we still going to go with climate change not being real fellow republicans see you're just a stupid racist uh, bigot. Um, you're an extremist. You're a terrorist. And now you are a Holocaust denier and you are a global warming denier. So you like you like being called that? That's not even, I mean, you don't even have to be a Republican. They're just talking to conservatives too. It says research is emerging, however. Our report last month showed that higher temperatures correlated to stronger storms in, in the Washington Post. They point out that scientists definitely agree that sea levels are rising. Actually, I don't agree with that because I've covered this before about a report of scientists are saying that the sea levels are actually lowering uh, because there's accumulation of ice at the pole. So, But it says making our cities more vulnerable to flooding. Hurricane Sandy is unfortunately a grim reminder of that. So there you go, guys. And even though 62% said that article was annoying. New global warming report sparks controversy from the 17th of October. The British Met Office uh, study suggesting global warming stopped 15 years ago stirs a heated debate between ecologists, theories, objectors. That's what I'm actually talking about when I say uh, deniers, climate change deniers. According to the study, there's been no noticeable increase in global temperatures since early 97. The warming trend observed from 1980 to 96 was about as long as the current plateau period. And prior to that, global temperatures had been stable or dropping for decades. So then they go on here and they got to fix the facts. That's the thing. And they go, there's a heated debate between um, the climate change alarmists who are trying to push a carbon uh, carbon tax on you and uh, basically destroy your standard of living right now and treat you um, like a piece of crap, really. They want you to live in a cardboard box and stuff like that and monitor and track everything. That's what it's really about. And just in the past, you know, five years, but, you know, especially in the last 10, 20 years, a lot of the wealth has been accumulated into fewer fewer hands, and they call it consolidation of wealth. It has happened, and there are statistics that show that. I've showed, I've reported on this before. Um, but the thing is, is they want to be able to track the slaves. There's a lot out there, and they want to make sure that you reduce your consumption while they themselves are going to increase their consumption. German meteorologists on temperature models, so far they are all wrong for all atmospheric layers from October 5th. Climate model trends have been providing uh, uh, scenarios for temperatures for the various atmospheric layers for about two decades near the ground surface, the troposphere, and the stratosphere. So according to the CO2 hypothesis, the atmosphere from ground level to the upper troposphere is supposed to warm up while the stratosphere is supposed to cool. However, meteorological measurements showing that just the opposite is occurring. So it says here for the next two decades, a warming of 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade is projected. But since 98, there's been no trace of warming. There hasn't been any warming in 14 years, despite steadily increased atmospheric CO2 concentrations. Yet this did not prevent the IPCC from making this absurd claim that progress in modeling, modeling has allowed the specification of very narrow ranges of uncertainty for projected warming. But the most recent evaluation of the Hadley Institute, CRU, up to July 2012 shows that precisely the opposite is true. There's been a slight cooling over the last 14 years, what many refer to as a temperature plateau. And in this article titled, Scientists Warn Geoengineering Can Kill Billions of People, they cover what uh, I've covered before, talking about the Wellsbach uh, cloud seeding patent. Uh, geoengineering can cause the warming. So it can actually cause global warming when tampering with clouds in the upper atmosphere or stratosphere. 
So these experiments of geoengineering are to be conducted above this level in the upper atmosphere or stratosphere up here. That's why you always see them a lot of times spraying really high up there, but sometimes they do spray lower. They do it for all different reasons. It says the upper atmosphere is called the stratosphere and extends as high as 31 miles above Earth. The clouds are generally thin, and it says here that they have a lower albedo reflective rate and act like a blanket that traps heat. But one of the studies was actually funded by Bill Gates, and we all know that he's a big, what, depopulation enthusiast, so. So we've covered, too, about how the spraying of aerosols in the atmosphere can manipulate the jet streams, but also um, we have the Gulf Streams, and with the whole BP disaster and the Fukushima disaster and possibly uh, the weather modification through uh, pulsing of frequencies and spraying of aerosols could possibly have a, an effect on the Gulf Stream as well. You have this article, Scientists Uncover Diversion of Gulf Stream Path, Warmer Waters Flowed into Shelf Break South of New England. So at a meeting uh, with New England commercial fishermen last December, says they were alerted by three fishermen about unusually high surface water temperatures and strong currents on the outer continental shelf south of New England. They say they're very dramatic events for the outer continental shelf, at least two degrees Celsius warmer than we've seen since 2001. It also said the maximum recorded temperature in 2011 of December was the warmest bottom temperature recorded in six years. And then we have this article, UK Experiences Weirdest Weather. So UK has experienced its weirdest weather on record in the past few months. The driest spring for over a century gave way to the wettest recorded April in, or basically April to June period in a dramatic turnaround never documented before. They say the scientists said there was no evidence that the weather changes were a result of man-made climate change. Well, they were man-made climate change, uh, very possible, uh, right? Because that's the trick of words that they play with you, uh, is what? The man-made climate change. Well, if, there's, if man is spraying aerosols and they're pulsing um, these aerosols that uh, have metal particles and stuff like that, nanoparticles in them, um, you know, basically charging it, and creating rain and creating snow and hurricanes, well then, yeah, it's man-made climate change. They're affecting it. But the catch is, or the rub, is that the, they're going to blame the man that uh, drives his car and goes to work or, um, you know, burns firewood or something like that or has cows that fart. I mean, that's how ridiculous it is. What on earth was this? Man photographs UFO floating in the clouds moments before 10 birds appear in garden. So the neighbor believes that UFOs are linked to the bird death. So what is this? Well, it's a heartbreak is what it is. Check out my video, uh, Battle Cry for a Planet of Victims, and you'll see these things uh, on regular. Uh, they're actually <laughs> shown on, um, on uh, computer displays and stuff like that. So, and that's a harp ring, and they got little scalar squares and stuff like that. They're pulsing energy, and that's why it probably killed the birds. But they like to say, oh, it's a UFO, right? Ooh, a UFO. So it just discredits what's really happening there. But we have been receiving a lot of rain. It's been raining uh, on average this, uh, this past month, this October and late September. It's been raining almost every single day, just co uh, cool out with, uh, with rain and lots of wind. But also, I have to point this out, chemtrail clouds and lots of pulsing rings. A lot, a real lot. Um, now there's much more ice at the South Pole than ever, so much for global warming, thawing, and Arctica. So it said here, sea ice extended over 19 million square uh, kilometers, experts say, is suggestive of changes in atmospheric circulation. Researchers say, rather confusingly, that both occurrences are down to the complex and surprising effects of global warming. See, that's the irony of it. When it's snow, uh, and lots of snow or something like that, they'll say, well, the snow doesn't prove that there's global warming. And then if it's colder, they say, well, well it, you know, just because it's colder doesn't mean, you know, uh, that it's uh, global cooling, that global warming doesn't exist. So no matter what you say, uh, they got you with their argument, with their logic. So this is the image, September 26th of this year, when ice covered more of the southern ocean than at any other time uh, in satellite record. On October 8th, 2012, is this what global cooling looks like? Earlier in the summer, a heat wave in the U.S. caused hysteria, of course, with the drought, probably due to weather modification, to break out among climate alarmists and their media enablers. The AP headline, the U.S. summer, is what global warming looks like. So, and of course, you can go in there and read all of the, the rhetoric in that. It says, sure, of course, there's nothing new about heat in the summer or forest fires, but hysteria was rampant amid claims. So it says the worm inevitably turns, and it says here currently most of the U.S. is experiencing unusually cool weather, 
Some parts of northern Minnesota have already gotten more than a foot of snow. This is almost a month ago. Uh, and it goes on here and it says, and I've covered this too about all the places where it's snowing right now. So, so yeah, they say the alarmists immediately retort, that isn't climate, it's just weather. In the meantime, don't hold your breath waiting for the AP to tell you that this is what global cooling looks like. Then we have proof that carbon taxes increase the cost of living revealed from October 25th since our introduction of the Australian carbon tax, the cost of living in Australia has risen exponentially. Yesterday it was revealed that the Australian carbon tax was having an impact on inflation in Australia. The data released by the central bank in Australia revealed that the inflation rate in Australia rose to 1.4% between July 2012. It says that's a three times increase on the previous quarter. Experts now admit that carbon taxes increase the overall cost of living for countries that adopt a carbon tax. Also, what the author finds is most baffling is how governments cannot identify precisely how carbon taxes are impacting on man-made climate change and household expenditures. Before we move on to the next article, the question is asked, how can governments justify a tax that does nothing but hurt the people it's intended to help? Well, streetlights turned off in their households to meet carbon emission targets. Huge swaths of Britain are being plunged into darkness as more and more streetlights are switched off by councils and road authorities. They're making the move despite concerns from safety campaigners and the police that it would lead to an increase in road accidents and crime. Britain's living standards are set to deteriorate in the future. So a new analysis of deepening income inequality in Britain has found that the rich will become richer and the poor will become poor amid plans to enforce a 10 billion pound welfare cut. The study found that low and middle income families will have their standards of living slashed until 2020 even if the country faces constant economic growth. The support through the tax and benefit system is set to fall over the long term, meaning that lower income households will tend to fall behind, i.e. starve to death, along with the carbon uh, tax and carbon emissions reductions policy, which is the point. Biggest concern for many workers just showing up. So, and more than 60% of employers are very stressed as study. A new depressing survey finds that U.S. workers are very stressed and that for nearly a quarter of all employees, a top priority is simply showing up to work. So 60% of employees report high levels of stress, 32% report constant but not as high levels of stress. It says 22% listed pre, uh, presentism, I don't know, that's just being present as their main concern and the most important thing to do at work. That's funny, I think it was Woody Allen that said, uh, 10, what is it, 90% of life is showing up. Why so stress? Almost 40% say it's because their work is increasing, right? They're having to take on the workload of other people, take on two jobs. This is a fact. You hear stories about this from friends and family. I know you do. Stress causes 36% of workers to waste an hour or more each day. The study found it causes almost 30% of employees to miss anywhere from three to six days of work per year. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, I've covered this before about how it actually works against the companies because of health insurance and people taken uh, off for sick because they're just working themselves to death. They're literally working themselves to death. And they're less productive for the company as a whole. So it says, as employers continue to take a wait-and-see approach when it comes to hiring people who currently have jobs, many of whom have taken on extra work, are starting to show signs of prolonged stress. This can result in burnout and reduced performance. I covered that before about the younger generation, mostly the ones in their 30s and that late 20s are having a hard time finding jobs because the older, the baby boomers, aren't able to retire. So the generation warfare, among other types of warfare, UK energy giant announces price rise. So the energy monopoly, EDF, has announced plans to increase price for gas and electricity by 10.8%, causing many British households to face a double-digit increase. It goes on and says that uh, an energy analysis or analyst says the current price rises were just the beginning as there will be further increases next year. He adds that this is at a time when household budgets are already stretched and despite the positive GDP figures released yesterday, the UK economy continues to... And then uh, we have this, uh, the Gazprom of Russia and then the EU's uh, Nabucco. So South Stream might be completed before Nabucco. So a rivaling project, Nabucco, backed by the EU, is supposed to kick off in Bulgaria January 10th, 2013. The Russian-backed South Stream gas pipeline has every chance of being completed before the EU's rival Nabucco project, Russian Energy Minister said. And I just covered recently uh, Hillary Clinton actually getting into the mix, uh, saying that they don't want a Russian, uh, basically, energy supplier uh, dominating the market so expect to possibly see some crazy stuff happening as far as that goes in the future thank you